you got your Bibles tonight, I'd like for you to turn over to the book of Matthew, chapter 1. This is my Christmas message for this year. Chapter 1, verse 8, beginning in verse 18, all of you that can stand, please stand for the reading and reverence of God's Word. Beginning in uh, verse 18, the Bible reads in chapter 1 of Matthew, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on the wise. And when his mother Mary was espoused, that means betrothed to, to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being just a man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thy son of David, Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus, for he shall save his people from their sin. Now all this was done that, in might, that it might be fulfilled which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet, saying, Behold, a virgin shall conceive, or a virgin shall be with child, and shall bring forth a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. And Joseph, being raised from sleep, did as the angel of the Lord had bidden him, and took unto him his wife. And he knew her not, till she had brought forth her firstborn son, and called his name Jesus. Uh, it's a Christmas time. It's a special time of the year. Amen. Uh, we've all heard the familiar Christmas song, Silent Night, the uh, Hark the Herald the Angels Sing, uh, O Little Town of Bethlehem, uh, 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 O Come All You Faithful. But I'd like to preach on this thought uh, uh, tonight, this might, a Christmas carol, Joy, the Lord has come, the earth has received her King. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we come to you in the sweet, precious name of Jesus, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for this time of fellowship, Lord. I thank you for the sweet spirit I've already felt here tonight, Lord. God, hide me behind the cross in the shadows, Lord. Set my mind on fire and fill me with the Holy Ghost, Lord. May we glean something from the message tonight, Lord. May we uh, uh, touch somebody, Lord, here tonight, Lord. We'll give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' precious holy name I pray. Amen. 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 We all know the story about the wise man got it uh, by the star uh, uh, guiding them to the place of Bethlehem, Bethlehem, the birthplace of Christ. The shepherds being told by the angel uh, in the city of David, uh, a Savior is born uh, and shall save his people from their sin. Now Christ was born into the world. He was born into a manger, amen. He was surrounded by his parents, Mary and Joseph. Uh, uh, there was perhaps some farm animals there, but you can only imagine the accommodations. Uh, they weren't the best, Brother Rod. Uh, it wasn't uh, the Omni downtown. Uh, it wasn't the Silbach, uh, amen. Uh, it wasn't the Weston Hotel. Uh, hey man, uh, the only joy there that night uh, uh, was the family surrounded. Uh, hey man, that baby in swaddling clothes, uh, the Son of God. Uh, hey man, uh, in the in the manger. Hey man, uh, today you and I are living in a world uh, in a people society. Hey man. Uh, Searching for some joy tonight. Uh, amen. Uh, joy is defined as happiness, uh, delight, or glad feeling. It's an experience, something deep inside. The greatest day of my life was the joy that I got saved. Amen. I got born again. Why, preacher? Yes, there was some joy placed down deep in my soul. This place is not my final home, amen. I'm on a journey. I'm on a place. I'm going to a place called heaven, amen. But you know, something's missing today. Folks like this, they're searching for happiness. 
They're searching for delight. They're searching for some glad feelings. But they're searching for them in all the wrong places. Like that old song used to say. And they're looking in the bars. They're looking on the streets to find their so-called friends to get a fix. They're going to the trick houses down here to seeking women to have some kind of sexual act performed. Hey, they try to find joy in drugs and alcohol, sex and lust in the flesh. I'm talking about the love of money. You know, people like to flaunt their money. They like to buy big houses, big cars, amen, high-end clothes and so forth. What are the results? We got more depression today. We got more divorces today. We got finances <laughs> going south today. We've got suicides at all uh, high time rates. Amen. I'm here to tell you tonight that man's soul is so big uh, that the worldly things can't satisfy it, neighbor. You know what you need? You need a friend in Jesus. Amen. You need to find the Lord. That's what you need to do. Only God can satisfy the soul of man through the cross. Amen. Don't get me wrong, we need houses and automobiles, but you know, there's some people that like to do it for status and boasting. Hey man, let me stop right there and say this. And the big ticket items, hey, won't bring you joy. The worldly things, hey, it's good to have friends. The best friend you'll ever have is mom and dad. Hey man, but the greatest friend you'll have is Jesus Christ. Hey man. I'm telling you, you won't find friends in the arms of another man or another woman. Hey, man, you young people, listen up. Boyfriend, girlfriend, stay pure until marriage. God bless it. Hey, man, the question for the world today, where can I find some real joy? Hey, man, there's something missing internally here. You won't find it down at the gambling of the statute. You won't find it in the materialistic things of the world. Hey, man, you won't find it at sporting events. Hey, man, I'm glad to report to this assembly tonight that you'll find some real joy at the foot of the cross. Hey, Amen. And why? Because that's where there was a permanent blood stain put there just for you and me. Amen. I'm telling you, Ajax, Mr. Clean can't remove that. Amen. Hey, the joy can be found in the word of an almighty God. I'm glad this book is transformational. Amen. You'll find some real joy in that book. Amen. If you just seek out the Lord with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. Hey, man, you know the word joy appears over a hundred times in the Old Testament. And the word joy appears about 60 times in the New Testament. Jesus is the greatest example of our joy. Hey, man, you know the Hebrew origin of the word joy is? Samach, S-A-M-A-C-H. It means to rejoice. Hey, man, you and I have got something to rejoice about tonight. You and I have got something to be joyful about tonight. Over in Luke 2, 10 and 11, the Bible says in verse 10 there, He says, For I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Why? Because born unto you this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Oh, you and I have got something to be joyful about tonight. Amen. In the Old Testament, the old prophets, the old leaders, they had some joy. They had something to be happy about. Why, preacher? Because of who's coming. That's why I can say, hey, Mo, Moses and Elijah, they said he's coming. Ezra and Esther and Nehemiah said he was coming. David and Solomon said he was coming. Isaiah and Jeremiah and Ezekiel said he was coming. Oh, Daniel and Jose and Obedidiah said he was coming. Oh, Micah and Zephaniah and Zechariah said he was coming. Oh, Haggai and Malachi said he was coming. Hey, Amen. Yes, and then you had a run. Then you had a, a little gap, a little period 
between them Old Testament and that New Testament. About a 430 year gap. There was no word from the Lord of God. Then suddenly, business began to pick up. Amen. Over there in Luke chapter 2, an angel appeared out of nowhere to these old shepherds. He said it for unto you, for unto you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. A sign appeared in the heavens, a star marked the birthplace of old Bethlehem. Old Bethlehem over there in Micah 5 2, it says, But thou Bethlehem Ephrata, though thou be little amongst the thousands of Judah, yet, yet out of thee shall come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel, whose going forth had been from old and everlasting. Yes. Amen. Oh, when the wise men got there, they said, That's him. Yes. Amen. When John the Baptist saw him, Brother Rod, they said, He said, That's him. Yes. Amen. When the Roman centurion saw him, Brother Cody O'Calvary, That's him. Yes. Amen. When Mag Mary Magdalene came around the tomb of Joseph of Earth and ran right into him. That's him. Amen. When Saul Tarsus, who was Paul, saw it, said, Oh, that's him. Amen. When the disciples saw him go up on the backside of the Mount of Olives. That's him. Amen. After the armies of battle of Armageddon turned their weapons toward heaven and said, Whoa, that's him. Amen. After a thousand year millennial reign, when they flow all to Jerusalem, the new city at the center of the city, Jesus sat on the throne of his father. That's him. Amen. The lost people of the great white judgment throne got to acknowledge. That's him. Amen. And the old devil, old snaggle tooth himself, amen, of being forced to bow and his change, and in change, is saying, that's him, amen, at the beginning of eternity of all ages, there's mom and dad, there's brother and sister, there's grandma and grandpa, there's grandchildren and cousins and aunts and uncles, there's your neighbors and your friends and your co-workers, amen, where are they looking? They're looking at the center of the city, Brother Sonny. Oh, and who's sitting at the center of the city? Sitting on the throne of his father, David. Hey, Jesus, that's him. Hey, man, for all time sitting on the throne in a robe of righteousness, wearing a crown, face shining like the sun. Oh, one day we're all going to acknowledge that's him. Hey, man, joy to the world. The Lord has come. Earth has received her King. Amen. Well, point number one. Point number one. Lord. The L in Lord stands for lower. Amen. He was made a little lower than the angels. Hebrews 2.9 said He was made a little lower than the angels. Angels for the suffering of death. Crowned with glory and honor that He might, that He, by the grace of God, should taste Death for every man. I'm glad one day, hey, I don't have to taste death, hey man. You don't have to taste death. I may die tonight. I may die tomorrow. I may die next month or next year. I don't know. I don't want to die. But I know one thing if I do. Joy cometh in the morning. Amen. Why, preacher? Because of what Jesus did on Calvary. Amen. It was ordained before the foundations of the world. It was formed that the Son of God would be the sacrificial lamb slain for the sins of the world. Hey, it, hey, it just could have took one drop of blood. That's all it could take to complete the mission. But Christ shed it all. Amen. And he stayed on the cross for you and me. What a Savior. He was obedient to the will of the Father. Being about the Father's business. He knows what you and I are going through tonight. You remember old Stephen when he was being stoned there. Oh, he looked up. He said the heavens opened. And I saw the throne of God. And at the right hand of the Father was Jesus standing there. The only time in the Bible I believe Jesus stood up and gave him a standing ovation. Amen. That's what Jesus thinks of you. Amen. When you need help, when you're down, He'll come off the throne. He'll give you some help. He'll give you some encouragement. He'll give you some strength. 
Amen. I tell him every day that I know that he loves me and he makes intercession to the Father on my behalf and he makes it on your behalf too. Amen. <laughs> Think of it like this. I'll use this illustration. It's like a bloodhound or a beagle, a bloodhound on the trail of a coon that's hot or a beagle on the trail of a rabbit. Well, why are you talking about it, preacher? What I'm telling you you need to be like the bloodhound or the beagle. Yes, you need to keep your nose in the buck. Yes, Sniff, amen. Yeah. You need to find that blood trail. That's what I'm telling you tonight. You need to be obedient. Yeah. You need to seek him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, yeah. amen. You'll find something, though. I'm not talking about something at the end of the rainbow, yeah. the fairy tales and fables, oh, and yeah. a pot of gold, amen. Hey, when you hear them hunting dogs, Open up on the trail. Business starts to pick up. Amen. Your blood starts pumping. Something touches your heart. And you'll start to open up on the trail. What are you talking about, preacher? I'm talking about a blood trail. Amen. I'm talking about the blood, the blood, the blood. It pours the glory. It leads us to the cross. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. Earth has received her king. Well, point number two, the O in Lord stands for He's the only begotten of the Father. He's the only begotten of the Father. John 3, 16, everybody knows that God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, whosoever believeth Him shall never perish, but have everlasting life. It's a whosoever, Greek, Jew, Gentile, black, white. It's a whosoever. Amen. Let me stop right there and say this. There are some people in the world today belonging, belonging to organizations like the BLM, the Black Lives Matter. Yeah. Let me tell you something. Jesus didn't come in the world to die for your skin color. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. He came after your soul. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's what he is after. He's a soul winner. Yes, yes. The greatest soul winner. That's what matters in the end. Yes. Everybody here, at some time or another, you've collected things in life. Collectibles, right? Yes. I used to collect baseball, basketball, and football cards when I was a teenager to about 22 or 23. And I still have them today. The first card of any athlete that comes out is a rookie card. Of any company that makes it, that first card that you want to have of that person of that company. Because if he hits it big, that's the most valuable. Amen. That's the most valuable. Take Michael Jordan, for example. His rookie card, I believe, was first produced by Tops. It's worth thousands of dollars today. Thousands. The first set of Jordan Airs he came out with cost you about 150 bucks. They're worth thousands, thousands of dollars. Several thousands. You see, Michael Jordan was one of a kind. He was a little different. He was a great athlete. There'll probably never be another athlete like him. You know, the word begotten in the Greek is monogenes. Monogenes. M-O-N-O-G-E-N-E-S. You know what it means? One and only one. Amen. You see, these items of Michael Jordan were one of a kind. There's no duplicate. Let me tell you, church, Jesus is one of a kind. He's rare. He's a valuable commodity. He's the only one that possesses it. What are you talking about, preacher? He has the blood, amen. He's the only one that possesses it. He comes from a divine bloodline. It's pure. It's perfect. It's righteous. He's the real McCoy. He's the only one standing between you going to hell and you going into glory. Amen. Accepting Him as your Lord and Savior tonight and going to glory. The only begotten of the Father, full of mercy and truth. Amen. He was endowed with divine DNA from upon high. He has His Father's eyes. He has His Father's heart. He has the love of His Father and the soul of man. It was love that drove Him to the cross because He looked down through the portals of time and saw people like you and me. Hey man, he has gentleness and he's generous. Just look at all the blessings he bestows upon us. Fully man, but fully God in the flesh with all the feelings of man. Tempted in every way. He didn't fall into snaggle to traps or snares. Hey man. You know, the devil tried to trick him. Hey man, how can you trick 
the author of the book that wrote it, that knows it inside out. Amen. The same fiery finger that wrote the Ten Commandments on Mount Sinai, carved them out, and gave them to Moses. The same finger that wrote that message to old Shabazar that Daniel had to interpret is the same finger that was outside the temple writing and doodling in the sand. The dirt and the sand there. Hey man, he was the only begotten of God, the one and only. He was special. He could only do what you and I couldn't do because of his righteousness. He led a humble life. Look how he came into the world, swaddling clothes. Just look how they made fun of him through his life. Just look how they treated him at the trial. They beat him and crucified him. Listen up. They may have mocked him. They've done some ungodly things to him. But one day, the Savior is going to be the roaring lion of Judah. Hey, man, and he's coming. He's coming and he's going to be sitting on the throne of his father David. He's ready to hand out the due punishment and judgment to those. Oh, there should be joy in the hearts of man tonight. Hey, man, why, preacher? First Peter 22, 4 tells us who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree that we, being dead to sin, shall live unto righteousness by whose stripes ye were healed. Isaiah 64, 6 talks about our filthy rags and our self-righteousness. Let me tell you something. It's not our righteousness. It's His righteousness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. That God took something. He imputed our sins Good. upon the Savior. Yep. And in turn, He imputed His righteousness upon us. Yeah, yeah. Amen. That word imputed, imputed means to assign or to attribute something. He attributed or assigned our sins to the Savior. Yeah. Hey Amen. Let me say this. It wasn't a fair exchange. Hey Amen. But I know this. You and I can stand before the bother because of the blood that was applied. Hey Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Earth has received her glory. Well, point number three, the R and Lord stands for resurrection. Over in John 11, 25, 26, Jesus said in red letter, He said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. That's a promise. Amen. Verse 26, And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this question? He's asking you a question. Yeah. Do you have some faith? Yeah. Do you have some faith? Oh. You can have a little faith of the mustard seed. Maybe you need to get out of that pew tonight yeah. and come to the old-fashioned altar. Yeah. Hey Amen. And lay your petition before the yeah, Lord. Hey Amen. The biblical definition of uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, evidence of things not seen, amen. Bless God, I don't have to sing to believe Him, amen. I'm more blessed. Why are you more blessed, preacher? Because remember old doubting Thomas? He always had to see to believe. And Jesus appeared to him. He said, Thomas, I'm paraphrasing. He said, see the holes in my hand? Yep, yep. And see the, the wound in the side here? Amen. He said, stick your hand, Thomas. Stick your hand, Thomas, in. And see. Jesus said, blessed are those who believe, but more blessed are those who believe and don't see. Yeah. Amen. That's you and I, the yeah. saints of God. Amen. We're more blessed. You know, because he lives, you and I have to face tomorrow. All fear is gone. He holds the future. Life is worth living just because He lives. Yes. You and I have got something to shout about, amen. Yes. we got something to praise God for tonight. Yes. Why, preacher? Because you're a chosen vessel, yes. sanctified yes. and set apart for a higher purpose, amen. Yes. Oh, we've been woven into that branch, amen. How why, preacher? Because joy to the world, the Lord has come. Earth has received a king. Matthew 3, 2, John the Baptist said, Repent ye, for the kingdom of God is at hand. And over in Matthew 4, 17, in red letter, Jesus said, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And that word repent, that's something you don't hear in modern churches anymore. Bless God, you don't even hear it sometimes. 
and independent Baptist churches. Amen. You'll hear them say believe. Let me tell you this. It's sound doctrine. You need to repent. You need to believe. You need to confess it. Amen. And something happened. Amen. God laid the blueprint out. He laid the salvation plan out. Amen. The Son of the only begotten God carried out and executed the plan of the Father's plan of perfection. A perfect lamb and a perfect act. Amen. <laughs> John said over in 14, 6, or wrote, and Jesus said, He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You know, the three greatest words in the Bible, I think, are, It is finished. It is finished. I'm telling you, the road to glory still goes by the way of the cross, neighbor. There's no other way. Your money won't get you there. Your title won't get you there. Your earthly uh, uh, goods and worldly things that won't get you there. Mom and daddy won't get you there. Grandpa and grandma won't get you there. Well, my daddy was a preacher. My grandpa was a preacher. I'm sorry, but it won't get you there. It takes the blood, amen. Hey, the devil doesn't have the keys to his own business anymore. Death, hell, and the grave. Jesus has got them, amen. Why, preacher? Because joy to the world, the Lord has come. Earth has received her key. Amen. Point number four. The D in Lord stands for we have been delivered. Amen. Second Samuel 22 two tells us, And he said, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. Psalms 107.6 tells us, Then they cried unto the Lord in their trouble, and he delivered them out of their distress. Jesus is delivered tonight. Jesus is the one who delivered the results on the cross and brought it down to man. Just look at the results. Hey, man, you've been delivered tonight from what, preacher? You've been delivered tonight from your sins, yeah. amen. God said that He'd separate them as far as the east is from the west and never bring them up against you again. That's a promise, hey, man. He took hopelessness and turned it into hope. He took fear, the tool of the devil, and turned it into joy and happiness through the cross at Calvary, amen. He took death unto life. No more graves, no more funerals, no more canes, no more wheelchairs, no more confinements to hospital beds, no more shut-ins. Why, preacher? Because we've been delivered. Amen. There was a song that we used to sing here years ago. Brother Jim Ferguson used to sing it. He did a good job on it. It goes something like this. I'll sing about four lines of it. <laughs> On that resurrection morning when all the dead in Christ shall rise, I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Graves all burst and saints are shouting, Hallelujah, all around. I'll have a new body. Praise the Lord, I'll have a new life. Why a new life, preacher? Because joy to the world, the Lord has come. Earth has received her king. That's why, amen. Point number five, let earth receive her king. Amen. Oh, the K and king, there's four sub points to five. I'll get through them quickly here, then we'll be finished. The K and king stands for... He is the King of Kings. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. He has a royal bloodline. Yeah. He has divine DNA. Jesus is Emmanuel, God with yeah. us. Yeah. Over in Hebrews 1.8, God Himself called Jesus, O oh God, thy throne is forever and ever. Yeah. He, hey, when He was born, I can only imagine uh, the, the accommodations there and the animals that are around Him. Amen. Like I said, it probably didn't smell that great. Hey, man, how about I believe? I believe there was a rooster sitting there on the fence post. Hey, man, I don't know if he was a Rhode Island Red. I don't know if he was a Bainey Rooster, Brother Cody. But I believe he was singing a song. Hey, man, it wasn't cock a doo doo how do you do? It wasn't for sunrise service. I believe he was, I believe he was crowing and singing, hey... 
joy to the world. Yeah. The Lord has come. Yeah. The earth has received her king. Yeah. Amen. That's what that rooster was crowing about. Amen. And I believe somebody probably went out there and got him and made some dumplings out of him. I don't know. But the three men, they appeared following the star, barking the birthplace of Jesus there in Bethlehem. What did they bring? They bring gold for earth kingly rule. They broke frankincense, representing deity to a God to declare authority over all the creatures and reminding us of his power and his might. Why? Because God created everything. That's why. And they brought myrrh, the symbolism of death, and some embalming fluid. John said over in Revelation 1, 5, he said he's the prince of kings of earth unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood. Jesus is the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Earth has received her king. Amen. The iron king stands for increase. Amen. Over in John 3.30, John the Baptist said this. He said, he must increase I must decrease. Hey, he's telling them boys, hey, you got to follow him now. they follow the ministry of Christ. Hey, man, Isaiah, Isaiah said of his increase, of his government and peace, there shall be no end. Hey, man, he'll rule. He'll rule from everlasting to everlasting for all eternity. Luke said in chapter 1, verse 32 through 33, he said, He shall be great, and she be called the Son of the Highest, and the Lord shall give unto him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Oh, there's going to be a government established by the Lord Jesus Christ. One day on this earth, hey man, hey, there won't be any more mandates, bless God. There won't be no more social distancing. Hey, bless God, and there'll be no more uh, 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 masking up and mandates, hey man. No more abortion, no more LGD, LGBTQ, no more sad goodbyes. Bless God, we're going home to a place called heaven. Hey man, what an increase, hey man, what a promise. Joy to the world, the Lord has come. Earth has received her king. Well, the end in king stands for the nations of the earth shall be his. He just walked the earth here. He traveled all the cities and villages, preaching the gospel and teaching the gospel of the coming of the kingdom of God. These people were moved. They should have been. God was standing right there in them, in front of them, incarnate. Amen. Over in Matthew 24, 14, he said, In this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world, for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. What preacher? There's going to be a tribulation period. There's going to be a millennial reign. Satan's going to be loose for a while to launch one last attempt against God. But John wrote over there in the book of Revelation. He said he saw a city coming down from God out of heaven, talking yeah. about the new Jerusalem, 22, 28. And he said, for the kingdom is the Lord's, yeah. and he is the governor among all nations. He's the boss now. Revelation eleven fifteen says the kingdom of this world, kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Why, preacher? Because he owns it lock, stock, and barrel. That's why he created it. Hey, man, he's going to be one day sitting on the throne of his father David, handing out judgment and punishment. Hey, man, and to his end, there will be no, uh, there will be uh, uh, no end to his government. We will have peace, justice, and order from this time forward, forever and ever. Why, preacher? Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Earth has received her king. Well, the last point under point number five is G, the letter G in King stands for glorious, what to expect from his glorious appearance. What should we be looking for, preacher? Titus 2.13 tells us, looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Those who are lost over Matthew 24.30 wrote this, <clears throat> and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man of Heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn. And they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven 
with power and great glory. For the saints, we're going home. We're leaving this dirty, filthy, corrupt mess behind. Amen. Revelation talks about the marriage supper of the Lamb. You can't go to the wedding unless you have a wedding garment on, folks. Uh, amen. You can't go unless you have a wedding garment on. Listen up. Uh, you'll listen for that trumpet. Uh, oh, and it'll sound off. Uh, had it be music to my ears. Uh, had it be music to your ears. Uh, hey, we're going home. Amen. Uh, oh, why? Because we're going home. My eyes, your eyes, the whole world's eyes are going to see him sitting on the throne. Of his father David. Amen. Joy to the world. The Lord has come. Earth has received her king. Yes. <clears throat> well, he came in swaddling clothes. From swaddling clothes to the cross, he came humble. Yeah. As to be born into a world. No worldly goods, yeah. nothing. Yeah. God incarnate. He left the Mount of Olives, but he left something behind. Yeah. He left something behind for us. He left his example of how to live. And he left an old blood-stained cross. Yeah. He left behind. Amen. That blood stain would transform the world. And the church was born. Yeah. He's coming back to get what belongs to him. Yes, he He's not letting Michael or Gabriel do it. No. He's not letting the apostles do it. No. He's not let, letting the Old Testament saints do it. That's right. He's coming to do it yeah. himself. Amen. 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 To claim what's rightfully yeah. his. Amen. 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 Dressed in royal pearl. Yeah. Glorious in righteousness all over his face. He is the Lord of Lords. Yeah. He is the King of Kings. Yeah. Jesus, our King, was given dominion yeah. over all the nations, people, and languages. His dominion will be an everlasting dominion. Yeah. That simply means to his reign, yeah. his kingdom, there is no end. Yeah. It shall not pass away. Why, preacher? Joy to the world, the Lord is coming. The earth has received her king. Let us pray, piano player. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the message tonight. I hope we got something out of it, Lord. Forgive me. Maybe I should have preached better. I pray, Lord, that we find some joy here tonight. Lord, let those come forth. Is there something missing? Lord, let them lay their petition at the cross. And seek you with all our heart, mind, and soul and strength, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you need to come tonight and seek the Lord, come and seek Him. Put your petition before Him. You need some joy. Amen. Pray, pray, pray. He's coming back.